Hey, everybody. Chris and I have our first sponsor. We're so happy now. Our association with the Ruinous Media Network has yielded us a sponsor, and it is DistroKid. And they help people get music up onto streaming platforms easily and cheaply. I use it. I've uploaded a bunch of stuff that I recorded eons ago, and now all that stuff's on streaming media platforms. And I did it through DistroKid, and it was super simple. So if you're a listener of ours and you want to try DistroKid, I highly recommend it. The code for you is talk guitars. So it's distrokid.com forward slash VIP forward slash talk guitars. So try it out. I hope you dig it. That's our first sponsor, man. No shirt, no shoes, no shit, no service. Today, we're going to talk about me. Yeah, me. Yeah, Rick. you, you. All you. about me, man. Almost a year ago now, I started building a classical guitar. And it's something I've wanted to do since I was a kid. I don't know why. I was fixated. And also, it's weird, too, because I, I was fixated on a classical guitar, right? Not a, not a steel string or whatever, but I wanted to build a class. I think it was just I had this romance about them in my mind, you know, like Andre Segovia and all this other crap. But that's what I wanted to do. And now, in my 60s, I'm, I finally decided to do it. So I might die before I finish it, but I hope not. But anyway, I've been doing it probably for the better part of this last year. I started last year and I'm going on a year now, but Chris and I thought it'd be interesting to talk about and check in with me now where, where I am in terms of the progress. And then maybe, you know, check in, uh, later on. After it's built. Yeah. After it's built. If it sounds like shit, you're going to jump out of (laughs) wigs. I'm going to smash it. Like, uh, we'll get baseball bats and we'll, we'll go um, office space on that thing. But, um, really quick, a couple of questions to get things rolling here. So you said, that, how old were you when you first had the idea to build a, a classical guitar? In my teens, like early Are you teens. <laughs> that's no, so, yeah, because I went to the library. I, don't, I went to the library and checked out a book on making a classical guitar. And back then it was like, you know, candles and... <laughs> right. You, know, you can't... <laughs> And, yeah, and but it was always this fascination, right? And it would just come and go. It wouldn't come and go. It was always in the back burner, but I would like, you know, check out a book or buy a book. So I have like five books on building a classical guitar. I just never did it. Right. You know, I never it's fucking... It's such a weird thing because you were Isn't playing in bands, playing electric yep. guitar. Electric guitars are very DIY friendly. Totally. You know I mean, even like a flat top is something yes. that you would find yourself probably have a use for. Yeah. It's like, cool, but... I mean, and I know you play classical guitar, so you'll have a use for that. But to be a kid and go, I want to play this really stuffy thing. Exactly. I'm going to get a foot rest and I'm going to get a bow tie. And we're talking about, I want to be Van Halen. Exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. And I, I have the same, I have the same, uh, you know, outlook on it. You know, it's like, what, what are you thinking? But uh, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And so I accumulated books over the years and got rid of them and then got new books. And and then finally last year, I, I thought, you know what, it, I got to do this. I just got to try it. And so the the thing that made me do it is I ordered the wood, right? That right. was the first thing invested. I ordered was the wood. Yeah, I invested in the wood. It's going to be a cedar top with Indian rosewood back and sides. And so I bought the wood. And then, you know, the thing you learn is all the tools you need or the tools you should acquire to make it, <laughs> right? you know, not and so need to hard. Build. To do. Yes, and, and, you, and like, need to build. Mat- yeah, right. exactly, exactly. So... That those revelations started to come as, you know, I got into the various different processes. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I I built the side bending jig, you know, out of plywood and and, uh, all the materials and built, you know, countless little jigs to, you know, to route out the slots for the peg head and all that stuff. And so, yeah, so, <laughs> so I've spent a small fortune just on the tool. <laughs> I bought this drum sander. <laughs> right. <laughs> My wife, Daniel's like, what, what did you buy now? And I've got this tiny garage too, which is funny too. You, Chris, you have to come out and see it. Cause it's, it's tinier just, now. I bet. Oh, it, oh yeah. But it's like, I'm like, you know, squeezing through these small spaces to get to, from one tool to another, um, <laughs> you know, jeopardizing dropping the guitar because it's anyway, but, um, so yeah, my space is tight, but I've got all the tooling I need and I am. So where I am right now is I'm putting the, the binding on the edges right now. And so once I do that, then I'll be able to, you know, uh, scrape everything level and all that, and then put the fretboard on. And I'm pretty close actually to being done. I wow. think, well, well, I say that, but I mean, there's still a lot of process to go, right? Is to, right. is to get the fretboard on and the bridge on and, uh, all that. And then to finish, of course, but, uh, 
Yeah. So you have the neck shaped or just kind of blocked in a little bit? I've got it blocked in a little bit right now. And then once the fretboard goes on, that's when the final neck. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The neck shaping goes. And then um, I'm debating whether or not to get a a fretboard that's just already slotted, you know, because the the guy. Yeah, that's the recommendation. Yeah, that might make more sense that's might be, make my a life pretty a little tedious easier. thing <laughs> yes. yeah and, and like setting the frets for the first time yeah it might be really good i mean that could be a yeah. bad thing but <laughs> something you probably eventually want to get into but it's like that yeah i mean yeah. it depends yeah. you're i i i'm a i love doing diy stuff yeah I have zero fucking patience i mean my amps always worked my pedals always worked uh-huh. they're kind of you know they're kind of messy you know it's just yeah. i just want to get them done so i would be the worst person to do that i could probably make an electric guitar you know like yeah a telly or something do you know the exact date when you started you said oh, it was man. going on a year or something i want to say it, i started in march of last year so just so it's been a year. year. Yeah. So just rolling up on a year. Yeah. I don't know the exact date, but I think it was March when I started it. Yeah. So far, what was the thing that was the most frustrating and the most nerve wracking? Like I'm going to ruin something or I'm going to cut my finger off or my arm. <laughs> the, Which... uh, so I, yeah. So the process of taking the router to the body to, you know, to cut the channels and the edges for the purfling and the binding right. is that was it for me. The mangler. Yeah. Oh, the dude. Router. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Because so I did the back, the rosewood, and that went fine. That was like, right. you know, oh, it was got. But when I got to the top, I routed off the excess, you know, that was hanging over the sides of the rosewood and it was starting to chip out. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Right. And I and I. You know, it wasn't super bad, but I thought, I don't know if this is going to go into the, you know, the top you know, past the binding. But then once I cut the channel for the binding, I was okay. But man, I, I, after doing that first pass on the top, I, I waited like two weeks cause I was scared <laughs> to do it. <laughs> I didn't want to screw it up, but that's, but it's funny you ask me that because actually every step of the way, every process, I'm worried I'm going to screw it up every step of the way. Right. So, you know, the first part was I was, I was showing you pictures as I was thicknessing the top. Remember that? I showed right. you these and I had, I picked the side I wanted and it's like, oh, that's beautiful. It looks great. I got it to the thickness it needs to be. And sure as shit, I was like, hey, I need a light up here. And so I'm fucking around with this light up here <laughs> and this thing drops, a screw drops. And of course it drops right on the top because I'm a dumbass, right? I didn't <laughs> move the top before I was, and there was this little ding in it. I'm like, fuck, that's the side I wanted to use. And like you were saying, you know, you could try to, you know, um, use heat and water and, and it out, you know, yeah. it out. but it did nothing work. So it's like, so I just flipped it over and, and did a couple more passes and that side's fine, but it's not the side. So, you know, every step of the way, it's either me being a dumbass or, you know, me fearing that I'm going to screw up uh, the guitar, you know, and then right, start over or something like that. Working with the top like that, it's like, you got to take it down the perfect amount or it's going to yep. sound like shit. Yeah. But if you go too much, you know, or get it uneven and you're going to fuck it. That, that sounds totally really dude. Oh, it is. And you, you know, you and I are the same way. It's like, I am so anxiety ridden. I'm like, oh man. Yeah. And I'm, I, I'm checking with the calipers and I'm, I'm watching the video. Uh, well, so I'll go back. So, so I bought the wood and then I also online, I found this guy named Pablo Rocana. Shout out to him. He's a builder in Spain. He's built guitars for over 20 years. Super cool dude. He he put this video series together of him building a classical guitar. And he step, walks you through every step of it. And so that's been my guide through this process is I'll, I'll watch the step for, you know, thicknessing the, the top and the sides. Okay, cool. And then I'll watch the part where he does this other thing. But the funny thing about it is sometimes he'll leave off, you know, some you know, he'll get, it's like a show, right? He'll get you to this one point and, and then he'll stop or, and then you, and, and he won't. Now for this word from our. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and then you're like, wait a minute, you, you didn't cover like, and so kind of it, you know, some of it you have to kind of fill in the blanks and like, okay, you know, trust the process and stuff. But for the most part, the videos have been super cool, super informative. And he, he walks you through, you know, every step of the process. That's another thing that really helped me along the way is it is because books alone, I don't think. I, I don't think I would have had the confidence to do it, you know, just with books alone or you know, right. materials like that. Yeah. Video really made doing stuff like this a lot easier. Even when totally. I started out doing 
amps and pedals i don't think they were that there weren't like as many videos i, I don't think no. i saw any of them i was kind of wondering like 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 soldering and unsoldering things like i was working on amps yeah and there were no videos out there that i could find even about that stuff <laughs> and then by the time i stopped doing it now there's a million of yeah watch people dick around in amps i do that sometimes for fun i watch someone like inside of vintage amp just unsolder and solder things and i'm like oh like what is <laughs> But it's so fun. That's good that you had that yeah. resource or, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's super cool and it's super helpful. Again, to go back to your question about, you know, what processes induces the most anxiety. I think the routing part of it was up to this point, the most anxiety ridden part of the process because I just didn't want to screw that top up. And luckily it went it went well. I just followed the process and did the whole thing. And and now I'm putting so I put the binding on the back and now I'm putting the binding on the top. And I'm going to do that hopefully in the next couple of days or a week or so. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, you, you, yeah, you, you want to get the, the right thickness for the sides and the top. You also want to have some fingers left when you get it done <laughs> so you can play it. The, the router is probably one of the most dangerous. Oh, I, dude. I used it because I've made some cabinets before. I made like uh -huh. amp cabinets and standalone cabinets. And a uh -huh. lot of times I'd use a router and it was like, it was pretty harrowing. Like, you know, I'd be like, it really, is. I'd have to psych myself up and, you know, breathe and all this stuff and get it. And I have I always had like shitty, like fences and things like that that I'd <laughs> kind of throw together out of stuff or a little. <laughs> oh, it was kind of, it was kind of sketchy, but so far I, I got all my fingers. Yeah. And that's another thing is the safety thing. Exactly. I was the same way with the router because, and well, now I've got, I've got, I think three routers, right? Because I, you know, and that's another thing too, is like cutting the whole, the sound hole and then the channel for the rosette. Those things filled me with anxiety too, right? Because, you know, you don't want to fuck up the top and you want to get the depth right on the rosette, all this. Well, and building the rosette. Okay. That's another whole thing unto itself, cutting right. the little pieces of wood that make up the decorative and supportive piece that goes around the sound hole. Jeez. It was tedious. And I was showing you pictures too of that as I was right. doing it. But it was actually kind of fun and meditative once you get into the process. But my God, it's like, oh man, I, that's another thing I'll say about the process is it's tedious because I had to cut all the little uh, cedar pieces to secure the top to the sides, right? Because that's the way he right. does it. <laughs> and so, so one of the things I found that I didn't anticipate was that the process is fairly forgiving. You know, yeah, yeah. I was so worried about fucking things up irreparably, but I have screwed up a little bit here and there, but I realized that, oh shit, it's, it's not the end of the world. Like for instance, when I was cutting the neck part where the sides go in to the neck, right? That the heel of the guitar and I'll, I'll, maybe I'll post some pictures on our site too, for where I am with this thing, but, um, I cut them by hand. Right. And so one of the sides is really nice. The other side kind of got a little off. Right. And I'm like, oh shit, that's going to leave a gap between the sides and the the heel. But once I put the whole thing together, the sides, it, the gap is really minuscule and I think it, it's going to be fine. But that's another skill that you learn as you go is how to recover from those exactly. things. Cause you come up with little tips and tricks like, and things like that. I mean, and that's one of them. I mean, if it's, if there's a little gap left, you can probably swell some of that out or, you know, just do something, some, something in there to pack it in there. But it, exactly. yeah, you're going to probably find, you're going to learn new skills about yeah. like, hiding things and making things look good. So exactly. that's really cool for that. It is. Yeah. And and that's what I've learned too, is, is exactly, it's a forgiving process. I mean, obviously there, you know, if you screw up too badly, then you got to figure out a way to, to recover or, or buy a new part or you know, oh, buy a new neck blank or something like that. But, Start uh, over. Oh, here we go. Exactly. But um, that, that's been really actually kind of a fun part of the process is learning that it is forgiving. And then another thing I've, I'm learning the hard way is patience, right? Is don't, don't push it. Like if I'm tired, call it a day. Cause, cause if I go any farther, yeah, that's when shit will happen. Right. I won't right. think about something and I'll learning that patience, you know, that's where I always sucked at. I mean, I just, it's hard, to, uh, yeah. you know, cause you're excited and you want to just keep pushing, you know, and you, you know, you want to get something done. Right. But it's like, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. I'm not, you know, this has taken me a year. And, and like you're saying before, I built a lot of the tooling, the side bending jig, I built this cool jig to cut out the slots in the peg head. I built this other jig to put the chamfer on the lower part of the slots, you know, where the strings come out to the nut, that, that whole thing. What other jigs have I built? Well, I tried to build a jig to cut the sound hole and the, oh, this is, this is one of the things I built this, this jig <laughs> that I was going to use to cut the sound hole, but I used it and I, I'm starting to cut the sound hole and I'm going, it's not cutting a circle, you know, it's kind of going, 
it would started to go sideways and I'm like, oh shit. And I started to cut the side. Luckily it, that part is going to be under the fretboard, but I, okay. freaked, I freaked out at the time. Like I, you know, it was one of those moments when I'm like, oh, I screwed it up. Now I gotta, I gotta do a new top or something, but I definitely listen to you talk about this. I definitely recommend getting the board that's already have the frets in it and just, yes, you know, yes, you probably have to go over them and, and shape them. The other thing that like is a job unto itself is the nut work. Oh, I don't man. know. I, mean, I never did a nut on a classical guitar. I mean, it's probably a little, might be a little easier because it's wider, but that, I mean, that, that's something that I did have patience for. Cause you have to, because cool. I, when I used to do nuts, I don't do, I wouldn't do my own nuts. Now I would have uh -huh. probably have a tech do them because it's just, it, it, I don't have the tools for it anymore. I used to have, you know, really good files and things like that. So yeah, yeah. all of these is just like a, a bunch of steps. It's like everyone could be its own. I mean, I'm a nut person. I just do nuts. Over right. There, things like that. So a little bit of everything with this. Yeah. That's what I'm digging. And you know, kind of one of the cool parts about it to me too, is, you know, you and I play guitars and we play acoustic guitars, but you never really look inside the damn thing, but you know what, it, you know, what's in there, but right. until you actually build it and, and kind of go through those processes, it's kind of cool. You know, you, you start to really, you know, become one with the instrument, right? Like if you play any acoustic guitar, you know, the steel string or classical now, you know, you know, you know what's in there, you know how it's built, you know, the bracing pattern, or, you know, that was a cool process too, is just, is putting the bracing on the top and the back and having it work. Just the little weird things too, that you got to do, you know, to, um, to build. Is it, it a one piece back or did you have No, a it's a two piece back. Okay. And That's then I also put what, yeah. this, yeah. And I put a strip right between the back <laughs> that looks so this. cool like yeah, that. yeah one thing I, I don't know if it's if if you have this with what you're working on one thing i really love about my martin is the mm -hmm. smell in there oh, it's like yeah. the cedar that they use it, it has this distinct smell and it just i mean it's from it's many it's over 25 years old and it still smells really great i yeah. always find myself sticking my nose in the sound oh hole. dude it's that cedar yeah. it's just beautiful smell well and the rosewood man like as i was yeah. as i was thicknessing the materials that was part of the, the fun of the process is smelling the cedar and smelling the rosewood as I'm thicknessing these. It, it is. It's really cool. That's what I'm looking forward to is to have this thing completely built and 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 having those sensations that we have with guitars that we bought. Right. And, right. you know, just to have that sensation, all, you know, the smells and how it feels and all that stuff something that you built and you know the ultimate thing is i hope it sounds good right I mean, <laughs> that's the key right it's got to sound good and play well so i'm sure it will you have a really good classical guitar now too so something yeah. to compare it to like exactly right? yeah. yep that's a great point yeah and i can i can do an a b to that and and get well you'll get know sense. it'll feel i mean oh I yeah love, i don't i haven't owned a classic guitar in years and years and years but they were always really fun i had a guild a really old guild classical guitar and i think was super fun there's nothing else like it you know I love and that. i played i didn't play classical music and i played a bunch of other weird stuff yeah it's it's been an odyssey you know and i i just bought i bought that drum sander and i bought a bandsaw and planes uh chisels and they all have to be sharp and so i've gone down those rabbit holes too which is another kind of fun thing for me because i never you know I've bought chisels before, but I've never sharpened them or, you know, and that, right. that's the first thing you should do when you buy a chisel or, a, or you know, cause they don't come like sharpened. And right. so I had to get the sharpening stones and do the whole, and I had to watch videos of you know, these different guys that are experts on sharpening your tools. And, and so, uh, that's kind of been fun too, or is the, is the other aspect of, of just woodworking that I've, I've had to get a little more acquainted with, you know? That was a question for me. How much woodworking experience did you have before you took this on? I had quite a bit. I mean, but not not woodworking at this level, like this detail of like, you know, working with really thin material and braces and 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 using I hadn't really used chisels or or planes much at all in my woodworking. It's been mostly like, you know, furniture or I built some electric guitars in the past, but I, you know, I bought the necks and it wasn't a lot of stuff like I'm doing now. So yeah, it, I had, I had, I'd say, you know, I mean, pretty extensive woodworking skills, but nothing, this is next level, right? Is where you've got to right. make sure your tools are sharp and you got to, yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's precision. Yeah. Yeah. And like a lot of fine detail. Yes. So I can't wait to see it. I mean, I've seen pictures of it. Yeah, dude, long, I'll, I'll bring it over. To... Yeah. I'll bring it over when it's done, but I recommend like not, not necessarily be looking at guitar, but doing, if, if somebody's out there that has a passion that they haven't done, you know, for whatever reason, I, I, I just suggest jumping in with both feet 
You know what I mean? Because it's like, it's, that's what I finally did. And and I was nervous and scared and full of anxiety, but I just did it. And so far it's working out. So like I said before, all the stuff, all the other stuff is what I've learned, like trying to learn patience and trying to learn other tools and, and, and trying to, you know, cut myself off if I feel I'm going past where I'm, I'm tired or so all those other things, it's kind of teaching me and it's, it's been kind of cool. How to string curse words together to come up with a <laughs> whole new meaning. Exactly. No, I think today the DIY thing is huge. So yeah. many people building pedals and amps and guitars yep. and all that stuff. So there was like a, a small niche back in like the seventies and eighties. And like you said, there was books like that. I mean, I forgot one around here somewhere, like build your own electric guitar or, yep. you know, some guy that's just like guitar repair, like twitching pickups and stuff like that. But it really took off. Because I think we have that, all of us have that in us is just we want to make something, you know, and we want to um, try it ourselves, you know, and, and it is, it's fun. And like you, yeah, I'm sure you got a kick out of like building pedals and amps and stuff. And, 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 and the cool thing is when you plug it in and you, it works, shit, it works right. and it sounds pretty good. It's like, and it, it, it demystifies the process, which is kind of, that's kind of fun too, is just seeing oh, this is just something, this is just a skill that you can learn, you know? Right. I, that, that got me, I take care of my own amps now. You know what I mean? That's I just so kind cool. of like maintain them and, and you know, replace things when they need it. And it's just, you know, I started with a champ. And the oh. thing that I think I did differently is I never built a kit. You know what I mean? I built my first yeah. amp because I found an old broken organ that had a 6v6, you know, tube in it and some other stuff. And I started from there. So, and there were, like I said, there wasn't any videos to show you how to do it. So it was just like forums and things like that. But, you know, from doing that, I learned like what does what, and, you know, champs a great little circuit and you learn what stuff goes on next. I made a deluxe then I made an 18 watt. And then I realized that I, you know, I like the older stuff better. And I'd rather just take care of that stuff, but it was great. So yeah, DIY, it can get you a lot closer to your your art. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. I I really do appreciate the fact that we are in an age now where we, I can get video instead of just, you know, pictures in a book, words in a book. Cause I think that helped me a ton. And yeah, I, I, don't envy you starting building amps back before kind of that whole process was going on because it is, it's harder. It's like, you got to, it's probably good and bad, right? It's good in a way that you kind of got to really figure stuff out more on your own yep. and, you know, bad, but that, you know, you don't have that, that visual, you know, step-by-step right. step process, but. Yeah. Finding it, pictures on the internet of old vintage amps, the circuit board, and then comparing that to like fenders, like drawing, and then looking at the schematic and putting everything together. I fixed an amp for my neighbor. There was an old Epiphone and there was, there was no ex- schematic available for it. He had a, had a guitar tech for years and he couldn't, he said, I, I can't find the schematics. And it, so he took it back and gave it to me. And I fixed it because I, I found three or four different schematics that had the parts that was kind of in this amp. Uh-huh. And I kind of use that to piece everything together. And it's one of his favorite amps. He plays it all the time. I so, love that. I mean, that's a skill that, and then I guess I do have some patience for stuff because that, that did take some patience because. Well, hell yes. Yeah, that was kind of messed up. And the, the dude had done some work in there. So it was kind of half wired. So there was stuff that I had to pull out of there and get it back to more like it was. And then. Yeah. And I love it that you didn't start from a kit that you just started from some old gear that, yeah, that you put together. I think that's cool. So I yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see this thing. What do you What are your estimation? If you had to estimate how long, do you have like a launch date or something? Like <laughs> I really gonna, don't. I have a recital in, in September. <laughs> but I'm going to do this thing. Well, I, you know, I I I never had one to begin with, and I, and I I kind of once I started building it, I was like, oh, I'm going to be done. But I really don't know. I, I'd say right. maybe several more months at least, yeah. you know, to finish it. But um. That's kind of the fun part about it, too, is just, you know, not having a deadline. I, I want to optimize my chances for, you know, building something that I think I will like and it will sound good. And it, even though it's my first guitar, I want it to be as good as it can be. So I'm just taking my time. And and um, yeah, I, I really hope it turns out good because I, 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 I want to build more just because it is fun. It, it's yeah. Once you get into it and once you get into these different processes, it's just it's consuming and kind of fun to do. I kind of so. Dig it. You, I think I asked you this. I think you said for as far as a finish, you're going to use like a French polish. Is yeah, that what you're going to do? Yeah. That's great because it looks it looks beautiful and you can do it. You know, you don't need a spray booth and all yeah. this other stuff. So, you know, I love that finish and it, and it lets you feel the wood. So yep. it's really, 
as a good way yeah. to go. Yeah, I'm really psyched to do that too. And the cool thing is this guy builds the guitars really in a traditional way, right? He uses the kind of traditional fan bracing and he doesn't use a lot of the modern, I mean, he uses some, you know, modern techniques, but by and large, he, he's based his design on the Torres and, and, you know, kind of the Hauser, kind of an amalgamation of those builders. And that's what I liked about him is he, I like kind of his traditional approach to these guitars because, you know, that's kind of the, my mindset. I like, you know, kind of old, old electrics and everything else and kind of the way things were done in the past. I mean, I'm using, you know, modern tools, some modern tools, but a lot of it is handwork and, yeah, so that that I was kind of drawn to that too. That he he kind of does this old school in terms of the the bracing and and his approach really to the building right. guitars. Is the neck is it ebony the fretboard or is it really yeah ebony ebony for ebony yeah. fretboard? That's and cool. Then, yeah, and one last question is yeah. it um, so Floyd Rose or Kaler? <laughs> Wilk Wilkinson or what, okay, what's the Wilk <laughs> Wilkinson? Yeah. <Or> <laughs> Uh, no cool. Floyd on this. No Floyd. Yeah. Yeah. I'm psyched. And uh, yeah, I'll put, uh, we'll put some pictures online either on Instagram or whatever, and listeners can check it out and, and I'll keep, I'll keep us posted on it. Thanks for asking about it. It's, it's been a fun process and I look forward to finishing this damn thing and, and hopefully put some, uh, some audio on online to, to entertain the folks. Sweet. Well, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Thanks buddy. Well, thanks for listening as always. Really appreciate it. And we are proud members of the Ruinous Media Network. And we've got a sponsor, DistroKid, which you, you probably heard us refer to that earlier in the episode, but we're super psyched about that too. Listen to us on Spotify and uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. We're on YouTube. And uh, what else you got, Chris? Nothing. Go and build a guitar or a pedal or an amp or something. Do something with your life. <laughs> Amen. Amen.